but the Tic Tac cannot be explained that easily. Recently, actually, there was a YouTube video by a Professor Simon who was like, oh, Tic Tac, that was the Lockheed Martin device. And I'm like, really? Well, what's his name came out and said it's undeniably 100% uh, uh, Lockheed Martin technology. Yeah, Ross Colhart said Ross that. Ross Colhart said that, yeah. Yeah, and th that interesting. So they didn't read Kevin's paper that shows it was it had con accelerations beyond human capability. I mean, like, there are published papers by me, by my friend Kevin, showing that's not possible. And everyone conveniently pretends they don't exist. Why and, couldn't it be possible that there couldn't have been some, if physics, if there's some sort of physics that was, uh, went dark in the fifties and they've been working on it ever since, and they've been, uh, developing it and when they wanted to test it against like our, our Navy fighters, wouldn't that, even if there weren't, wasn't humans in there that wouldn't absolutely. be like liquefied moving around, couldn't they, wouldn't, isn't it? Great question. Great question. You got to read Kevin's paper. It's because even if it was unmanned at the accelerations that Kevin has calculated, mm -hmm. there doesn't exist a material that could withstand that. It oh, would just really? be crushed. Like, and I, and I know what you're gonna say, oh, some breakaway civilization. No, you don't understand. There's literally against the laws of all physics. Yeah, but what and if the like, material isn't actually going against air like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if, I know what exactly if it's like what you creating mean. a cavity, a cavitational type doesn't thing? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. These are simple, basic laws of physics we've known for centuries. This is one of the points of Kevin's paper is the accelerations mm -hmm are not possible. They would destroy any material. I don't care if it's in air, I don't care if it's in vacuum. And conveniently, everyone who spouts off, they think they have figured out the Tic Tac, they all pretend that Kevin's work and my work doesn't exist. Mm. They don't read it, they don't, in fact, did you know I have proof that Sean Kirkpatrick lied under oath and nobody's listening to me. Mm. Every, no news media outlet would carry the story for me. I said, I can prove it. Nobody listened to me. How do you prove it? So here's what happened. What happened was, um, this might be the first time I'm saying on a podcast, but I don't care. I'll get in trouble, but whatever. Um, I'm just sick and tired of all the lies and the obfuscation. I, so um, during one of the hearings, former head of Arrow, Sean Kirkpatrick said to Senator Gillibrand, to her face, under oath, it was one of those mini hearings. There was like almost nobody there. Mm. It wasn't the full Congress, I think. It was like, it was just Sean Kirkpatrick, Senator Gillibrand, and a few people, okay? It was like a, a subcommittee meeting of some kind. He said, um, I'm gonna paraphrase, but I, I wrote down the exact quote, of course. He said something like, there is no, there are no published scientific papers claiming that the Tic Tac encounter might have been aliens. And then he sneers, he laughs like, and if you think otherwise, you're welcome to publish. We already published a paper, Kevin did. So can we go back to knuthlab.org and I'll show you the paper? Mm -hmm. This is many years old already now. Okay. It's a paper published, estimating the flight characteristics mm -hmm. of anomalous- Maybe he just wasn't aware of it. I know you're gonna say that. But guess, of, so then he was, so then he's ignorant and he's not good at his job. Sure. He's the head of Arrow. But what if I could tell you, what if I told you that's not the case because I told him about it. So Kevin and I, UAPX, we had, we actually had, we were told not to talk about it, but you know what, screw them. Mm -hmm. I'm so sick of these people. We actually talked to Arrow. We had a like a Google Meet or Microsoft Teams or whatever, or Zoom or whatever the hell software. I We met with them. We actually talked to them and we actually brought up Kevin's paper and it's like, look, it turns out in the Nimitz encounter, these accelerations, if you apply them to interstellar craft, these would be good interstellar craft. You could cross the galaxy in a few months. And like, we told Sean Kirkpatrick. Mm. I heard his voice, he asked me a question. I know Sean Kirkpatrick was on the call. Wow. And so you're not gonna tell me he didn't know. So either he didn't know, in which case he's ignorant of mm -hmm. facts that he needs for his job, Fortunately, he's not head anymore um, of Arrow. Number two, okay, then, or he's lying or he forgot conveniently, okay? So you're right, I can't prove he's lying, but he's either lying, ignorant, or forgetful. Which of those is the better option? All of those options are bad. Mm. But anyway, he's aware of this paper. Could you go back to, um, uh, could you please click on um, a UAP library again, like last time? So Sean Kirkpatrick knew about this paper because we told him about it. We're like, oh, and Kevin has uh. written this great paper. In this paper, which Ross Callhart has conveniently forgotten exists, right. um, because he knows about it too, because I've talked to Ross, I've talked, Kevin's talked to him. In it, he, in it Kevin and his friends, uh, Robert and Peter from the Scientific 
Coalition for UAP Studies, SCU, they show that the Nimitz encounter demonstrates velocities, accelerations beyond human capabilities. And Mick West poo poos this. He says it's BS, it's a jet or a seagull, or whatever the usual. <laughs> this is a scientific paper. Wow. It passed peer review. But then you know what the critics say? Oh, it doesn't count. You know why it doesn't count? Oh, Kevin's the editor of the journal. He's not the only editor. He recused himself. And that's what they always say. Mm. My crash paper, that doesn't count. That's in Limina. It's a UFO journal. Mm. You know what's the one paper they can't say doesn't count? Kevin's history of UFO of UFO studies is in progress in aerospace sciences. That's a major journal. Mm -hmm. And my paper on the UAPX results is also progress in aerospace sciences. But yeah, basically people, skeptics always find a way to pretend that this doesn't count, mm. that these facts, these numbers, these results are wrong or they don't count. Right. But what's really incredible to me is like, like the past week I hear all this nonsense that the Tic Tac was Lockheed Martin. People, why are they not reading the facts? Like Kevin did a study, SCU did a study of this, and it shows that this is incredible. Let's now take the perspective of like, I'm very skeptical, but let's take your perspective. Let's say, ah, it's not alien, some super advanced tech. Then I got some questions, okay? Number one, why isn't David Fravor, Top Gun Academy pilot, why isn't he flying it? Why are we still wasting time with F-16s if we have this? Because it has to be kept secret, why? super classified. But why don't we, then, okay, I have another question. I have another answer for that. Then I've had the same conversation multiple times. Why did we lose Afghanistan? Why has America lost every single war it's been in since World War II? If we had this, we should be flying this shit around. We should be going to Ukraine, bailing out Ukraine. Mm, it's not helping. worth. It's Is not there... worth deploying in those types of things. We don't. Give a, we don't give a fuck about the people in Ukraine or Afghanistan. All okay. those. All those wars are just about money, and, okay. and and extracting oil. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. So I, I don't think that they would plan on. But using... that makes me angry. Of that makes course, me angry. Yeah. Because frick. If, if we have this technology, I want America to use it to win every war. We're like, what the hell? Yeah. The so it makes me mad. As a taxpayer, if I paid for that shit, it needs to be used, mm. not just hidden away. Yeah, no, I, I, I <laughs> think, I, I think um, possibly one of the reasons for the information coming out about this stuff and, and this becoming more public in the, in the media could be some sort of a deterrence, uh, some sort of a subliminal message to other countries uh who probably are working on very similar things oh yeah to let them know that we have it in in the case that there ever is some sort of an ex existential crisis that would bring a war to uh, american soil i have an answer to that we don't need it we why would we need a tic tac we have nukes already we already have the best thing that could anni annihilate cities in seconds I, I don't understand what the point is yeah nukes uh the problem with nukes is that everybody has nukes. And as soon as a nuke gets gets launched, it's likely just going to be Armageddon. And I know. I, I think I everybody know. knows that. I know. But then it's the same thing with the Tic Tac technology. Because you can use that to drop a nuke. Uh, yeah. But if you have the Tic Tac te technology, uh, you know, who knows what that could be used for? I don't know. I don't know how it can be used for weapons. But um, I, I think that, again, you know, this is all conjecture. I, I don't know what possible weapon systems could be de deployed using these things. But um, the fact is it's super advanced tech and it's scary. And uh, to let people, you know, people can use their imaginations. If you have these things that can travel from one point to another in an instant, what type of weapons do you actually have? And, you know, well, is, we have deterrence with nukes. I mean, we, we not only do we have, not, not only is every... Uh, there's nine nations that are armed with nukes mm -hmm. and we have, you know, systems like the star Wars things and like these laser things and on satellites that you had any potentially any Jacobson on the show. Yeah. 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 And that could potentially take out uh nuclear warheads when they enter the atmosphere. I, I, you know, I I'm terrified at the idea of nuclear war, but I think that there's, there's other things that we're developing that we don't know about that we'll probably maybe learn about in the next 20 years. My, DARPA's been yeah, yeah. historically working on things that never come out into the public for at least 20 to 30 years. For example, like Neuralink. They've been working on, yeah. on brain chips for soldiers since well, the early 90s. All that's going to collapse now. Because Doge has cut everything, basically. So no, I'm dead well, serious. Doge, Doge, funding Doge, has Doge, been cut Doge left Doge and right. Doge is taking funding out of out of things like 
well, uh, IRS, HHS, so you know, well, the, and my these, dark matter originally, but they're they not, restored it. <laughs> the, you know, Elon was behind yeah. Doge, but e Elon yeah. gets all his money from the Pentagon, where there is a twenty-one trillion dollar black hole. Oh yeah, that's been going to things. That's, so, so well, I don't think he's, I don't think he's attacking the Pentagon. The Pentagon just got yeah. his budget increased to a trillion dollars. Oh, I know, I know. I was kidding. I was yeah, just kidding. Right. But my point earlier was that if, the thing is, you can't keep secrets forever because scientists are clever, curious people. Things get accidentally rediscovered. Mm. It happens all the time. So,